Hey everybody, uh, tonight I need to do a little bit of uh, tank maintenance in this tank. I'm not going to do anything major, I'm just going to do a basic water change. I'm going to wipe down the glass and I'm going to trim some of the plants. Uh, this is my 125 gallon African themed tank. And the only plants I'm really going to trim, to be honest with you, is the water sprite there in the middle. It's not exactly floating, but it's certainly not rooted into the substrate either. I have it sort of pinched between a piece of wood and a rock in the tank, and that's what holds it in place. But it is basically free floating, and it grows like a monster in there. So I need to get in there and trim some of the actual uh, branching out. But it also has lots of little roots and babies growing off of it. And if you see all these little areas where there's sort of little points and clusters where you see roots hanging down, that is actually the beginnings of new plants. So I need to thin all of those out. I'm actually considering uh, thinning out these roots a little bit. They really do block a ton of light from getting down to the bottom of the tank, but they look so good. Uh, I really don't want to get in there and cut too many of those roots out. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but this end of the tank, you can see right there, that's a great example of what I was talking about. All these roots are coming from this little section, which will be a new plant. So this is basically what I do when I get in here and I do water changes on this tank. About every time I do a water change, maybe every third time, uh, I need to get in here and do a serious grooming and really thin these plants out to allow light to get to the bottom of the tank. Because believe it or not, as dimly lit as that looks, I have a four foot shop lamp that has two um, T8 tubes in it. And then on either end of the tank, I have a uh, dome light. I don't know if that's coming out on camera really well. It's kind of dark up there. Um, but they're aluminum dome lights that have uh, compact fluorescence in there that are fairly bright um, lights on either end of the tank. And yet it's still that dimly lit and dark. And that is mainly because of the coverage that you've got right there but there's also a fair amount of tannins in the water so I'm only going to do about a 25 percent water change we're going to trim those plants up we're going to do a quick before and after at the end and that's going to be okay everybody wow um, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this I cannot believe what I just found out I don't know how I let this one get by me but I did uh, yesterday morning we had a power outage and I shot a video where I was showing you I was keeping my tanks up and running by using a generator. So I had to unplug all my filters from where they're normally plugged in and I had to plug them into the cord that I ran for the generator. Well, this filter is not running. When I went to unplug it to do the water change, I couldn't find a plug in the wall. And I, in a panic, I came and checked the filter and sure enough, it's sitting there as still as can be and I never plugged the uh, filter back in after I came down and unplugged all of the extension cords for the generator. So this tank has been sitting here with no filter running on it for 34 hours. It does have an 850 gallon per hour power head in the corner. There is enough water current moving around in there that you can see even at this end of the tank there's movement on the plants so it does have a lot of water moving around and circulating and I just did a video recently where I had shown you that even with my filter running I simply kept the surface agitation to a minimum and there was no problem over a 36 hour period now I wouldn't have actually done that and tried turning my filter off for 36 hours but in this case, I did that completely accidentally. I just cannot believe I failed to plug this tank back in and get the filter up and running when I turned the uh, generator off around noon yesterday. So it's been 34 hours, and this tank has not had a filter up and running. I had not planned on doing a filter change. All right, I really hadn't planned on making this a very extensive video, but under these circumstances, I'm certainly not going to let this opportunity pass without doing some testing and using it as a lesson for us all. So my chief concern would be without my filter up and running, without that water moving over my biologicals in my filter, did I have any ammonia buildup? Did I have any nitrite buildup? And the answer is no and no. You can see the yellow vial on the left there indicates no ammonia whatsoever. I've got no nitrites whatsoever. 
and the nitrate vial does not actually look that terrible. Uh, that's the reason I was doing a water change. It's been a little while since I've done one, and I know that is coming out a little redder on camera, and it is certainly red, but it's not alarmingly red or anything. We're just right up around that 40 parts per million, right around where my tanks usually hover. This is about when I do a water change normally. So, what does that mean? I had no filter running for almost 36 hours, and yet I have no ammonia and no nitrite spike. So, when we get into the after, we have something a little more interesting to look at, like the tank. I will get into much more detail, and we'll have a little discussion about this. Okay, and of course I was not about to put the dirty water from the old filter back into the tank without at least giving it a test first. So as soon as I cracked it open, I knew I'd made the right decision. And as you can see by the vials there, the vial on the left is showing deadly amounts of ammonia. The vial in the middle is showing deadly amounts of nitrite. And then the vial on the right there is showing my pH. Now that's not an entirely accurate pH. I didn't really think about taking the pH until I started filling the tank back up. So some tap water had gone back in when I tested the pH. But that's fairly close. And all in all, it's still below neutral. It's still in the acidic range. So the ammonia going into the tank would not necessarily have been that big of a deal. It would have been bound up as ammonium shortly after going into the acidic water. Uh, however, the nitrite would have still been an issue, and either way, I don't want to put that stinky, nasty, filthy water back in my tank. It was really, really gross. Uh, the filter itself was not that dirty. As I suspected, it hadn't been that long since I'd done a filter change on that tank, so it's not a big deal that I'm going to do a filter change on it. Uh, it can use it, but it was not really bad. Uh, it was foul when I opened it up, though, so that's what you get for letting the filter sit for almost 36 hours with no circulation. So now that I'm getting this all taken care of, the tank's already filled back up. Once it settles in, we'll go do that final bit. All right, everybody, here's your after, and we are right after. I mean, the bubbles have not settled out of the tank yet, nor has the dust. So I gave it a little bit of thought and I decided that we're going to go ahead and finish this video as we started as far as just doing a simple before and after. This video has already run kind of long or longer than I intended it to. It's getting a little later at night and I don't want to push this over to tomorrow. So we are going to just do another video all together where we talk about the nitrogen cycle. We talk about where ammonia comes from. I've talked about this plenty before, uh, but I do have a lot of new subscribers as of lately. Uh, thank you, by the way. And I haven't shot a video talking about the nitrogen cycle or water chemistry or anything for a while. So we'll do a little refresher course on that tomorrow. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so or at least check back frequently. Uh, within the next day or so, I will get that video shot and it will be a much more lengthy discussion type video. As far as this water change is concerned, when I got in there to remove some of the plant, I got a little overzealous and I really removed a lot of the plant. I reached in and I cut what was a likely looking branch that went off towards the left end of the tank and when I removed it and pulled it out pretty much everything at the left end of the tank came out. It was one branch and I cut it off. So we are down to just a few branches now. It'll grow back. It's no biggie. I'll give you a look at the inside where I cut it. If the glare on the light will allow for it not really you can sort of see the stumps where I cut the ends of a few of the major branches off and then you can see where I've got well I guess you can't um, I do actually have growth coming up out of the water sorry for all that blinding light I really was not expecting it to wash out like that um, I do have a few more brand new branches just starting and they are curling up and out of the water so they'll take a while to straighten out and settle down and get flat in the water again in the meantime you can see how much more light is penetrating the tank and how much better everything looks at the bottom so these plants down here will now get a much needed boost of light so that's pretty much it everybody that was what I intended was a simple before and after just a basic water change uh, large plant trimming and I did wipe the glass down and of course as you know I changed the filter over while we were in there so stay tuned to look forward to that video all about the nitrogen cycle and why my tank was still fine and yet my 
filter of stagnant water was loaded with ammonia and nitrite. There's a very easy to explain reason for that. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you real soon in the next one.